All right, guys, just a little announcement. I'm, I'm doing some clubs now. I want to do some more fun stuff. So March 23rd, 24th, 25th, I will be in Bridgeport, Connecticut at the Stress Factory. It's March 23rd, 24th, 25th, just announced. And more importantly, bigger picture, tell a friend about the cast, all right? I mean, we appreciate the loyalty. We got strong base, and you guys are with us every week for years, and we love you for that. But let's grow this beast. I'm tired of seeing lesser casts with more viewers. But more importantly, I appreciate all you viewers. All right. This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. All right. Welcome back. Pete and Sebastian Show up and running here for a nine season strong. Wow. Um, yeah. It's, uh, it's like fucking. I mean, uh, days of our lives. We're going up there with soap opera. We got, you know, we're matching in. Do people still watch it, bro? I don't right know. I, did. I see every once in a while someone uh, passing away off a of soap opera, and uh, yeah. I remember growing up with them. My mom used to watch those like religiously every week, and I'd be like, geez. Yeah. I go, didn't this guy die? It, like in the show, the guy would die, right? <laughs> and then he <laughs> yeah, would yeah. come back as another character. I'm like, who's, who's believing this stuff? <laughs> the twin that we never knew he had. I remember, I, do you remember when we were kids how huge it was when that Luke and Laura were getting married? It was mm. like. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. And Luke, I didn't watch that shit, but I remember because when that part was coming out, I'll never forget. Um, I was raking leaves with a buddy of mine for money, and it was the afternoon, and it was on. And we were looking through the lady's window because she was watching it. I mean, it was the biggest thing. What was that? Days of Our Lives, and Luke had curly hair, I remember. I think it was General Hospital, I want to say. General, I don't know, General but Hospital. let's get a Google on Luke and uh, Laura, what what uh, soap opera. Bro, I'm sorry, no disrespect to Luke, but yeah. when I saw him, I'm like, yeah, General Hospital. I'm like, I could do soap operas. I mean, the guy wasn't that, you know, I'm looking for like an Antonio right. Sabato Jr. type. This right. guy was like, he's the hell are they you getting all uh, hopped up over this guy i couldn't believe laura was marrying him i agree with you i totally agree <laughs> i he had that real like uh uh richard simmons the, the workout guy that those tight curls oh yeah god, i didn't and luke was in his prime you imagine luke now oh god i bet laura's hot can anyway. we get a can we get a google on uh a then and now on luke from <laughs> general <laughs> hospital Jesus Christ. Again, you don't really get this out. on any other podcast. No, 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 bro. They don't, they've already been talking about something up someone's ass three times by now. <laughs> <laughs> My God. They can't. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Okay. Oh, yeah. Here, oh, here's, Lu here's Luke. Look at that. Here's Luke. I mean, not, not a bad looking guy. I thought it was, I think, I thought it was a little bit. Uh, I mean, I like, he looks I didn't. terrible. I Look at that hair. I couldn't put my fingers through that hair when I was making love to that guy. I wouldn't know if I'm grabbing his hair or his fucking balls, right? I mean, he's got pubes on his head. It's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, oh, no, man. I just, I, I remember him being a little bit more uh, weathered than that photo. But uh, actually, it didn't, you know, without the curly hair, I think he's a, maybe a, a decent looking guy. Um, do we got uh, anything? Uh, uh, yeah. Now, have we spotted this guy getting groceries at Ralph? Oh, here we go. Wow. What do you think? Uh, I, I wouldn't even know that's Luke, but Laura aged nice. She's still a very mm -hmm. attractive lady. She's still, I still look at them 30 years later and go, what are you doing with this white haired guy? Like, <laughs> if they stayed, if they really got married in real life. Oh, they did? No, if they did. Uh, oh. Isn't that weird, bro? Do you think, honestly, that when, when regular people get married and one of them is really, you know, significantly more attractive? I know we kind of brushed on this a couple of weeks ago, but do you think, uh, do you think they know as a couple? Oh, they got to know. They got to know. Yeah. Like, relatively speaking, in, 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 in your relationship with Jackie, and you don't have to answer this question, but, like, who do you think's winning? Like, oh yeah, me. Like, I, I mean, yeah, yeah. I think she's very attractive, but but I think do you do you think she's more attractive for a woman than you are for a man? 
Uh, I like if do, you were, but if, but if not you, outrageously. If, not outrageously, though. Not outrageously. Like I'll put it to you this way: if she came out of the ladies' room at a movie theater, you know how everyone splits up and we kind of meet in the lobby after the movie. And you kind of like you ever see someone come out, attractive woman or an attractive guy, like a good looking dude, and, and you'd go, oh, he's obviously waiting on an attractive lady. And then you see three women come out, and one's like attractive, and you're like, they grab hands, you're like, knew it. So I think if I came out of the bathroom and walked over to Jackie, anyone watching would be like, eh, it's, a, it's about right. I mean, you got a little lucky, but it's about, it's a good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about it's you? Uh, well, you know, take I, the I, fame I out. To... <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's funny. I was no, looking look at good, photos. Uh, actually, I gotta send you this photo. I'm gonna send you a photo, I, and I even sent it to Lana, and I had to applaud her for as far as looks go, and where I was <clears throat> when I met her. I said, I don't know how the hell I landed you. Um, I I look terrible, I, bro. Yeah, I look like. When I met Lana, Lana, I look like a lesbian. <laughs> uh, did you look like you were tra- transitioning, possibly? No, full lesbian. No transition. <clears throat> just, just a, just a full lesbian. Uh, well, I gotta find the photo again. No what, show prep. What? No. Just th- listen. This is part of the show prep. The fact that this is we're just doing this on the fly lets them know. You know. Now, I think though what. Um, is interesting with Lana and with Jackie is I think they looked at us as like, uh, you know, when you lift the top off an old car in a barn and you're like, and you're not looking at what it is, you're seeing what you can make it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know? So I think with you it was mostly, you're a handsome guy. It's just a lot of fashion problems that just you had to kind of like see past that to see the guy. She's like, she can't ask to see you naked right out of the gate. So she's trying not to see all the shit you wear. Were you still doing half shirts by her? Or no, the half shirts I lost, bro. Uh, right, the last right. half shirt I wore, uh, as we well know, I think was the uh, Made in Italy stamp. Uh, oh, way on, back. Not uh, yeah, this, this was uh, 17, 18. Oh, bro, I oh. used to rock a half top on. Uh, I used to have like a routine when I used to cut the lawn at home. It was like, all right, let me start with the half top. Start. <sighs> all right. And it got a little hot, right? Bro, I, I lived my what? entire youth thinking someone was watching me, right? <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love it, bro. I hear you. That's like when you wash the car with the radio on yeah. from the car. Yeah, all that. Now, by the way, didn't you grow up on like a quarter acre like me? Yeah, yeah. It was a corner lot. So I was exposed. How much land? How much land? I, I, I would say, I don't think it was a quarter acre. Might have been mm, one-fifth, maybe. One-fifth of an acre. Right. Yeah. So, so, you know, you're, you're, so you're like, the first two rows, I'll go uh-uh. to half shit. I mean, you no, act no, like no, you're no. doing a field. <clears throat> I, I did all the parkways first. I had, you know, there was... All there's three parkways I had to do, and then and then the sidewalk, and then you had the main lawn. So I would do the parkways, and then I would let the the mower rest on the driveway and do a crisscross. I would do like a Stallone. Oh, bro! <laughs> and then I would throw it in my the waistband. <laughs> Of my shorts, so it would be just dangling off the right ass cheek. Ooh, yeah. right. Oh, yeah. dude, I love the tuck shirt dangling look. I usually went right on the back like I was playing flag football. But <laughs> but you didn't you have a girl lived on the block that kind of could have been watching at any time? It was always like a little little thing yeah. with her, right? Down, down the street, oh. her name was Kathy. I was hoping that maybe she'd be riding her bike during one of my uh, one of my lawn cutting or, or uh, car washing right. sessions. And, and trust and see Kathy the, uh, was hoping, she was hoping too, that she'd be coming by right at that moment. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> I love um, it. What a great line. I grew up my whole life feeling like everybody was, was watching me. That's fucking great, dude. We all did. <laughs> All right, guys.
groceries, school shopping, getting a little something for yourself. You know you already doing all this stuff, so why not get cash back for doing it with Ibotta? You can earn cash back on every shopping trip. Ibotta gives you cash back on hundreds of grocery items from produce to personal care to pantry goods. Either link your loyalty account or upload your receipt after you shop and get cash back. It's that easy, man. It's that easy. Get some cash back, man. Uh, the average Ibotta user earns $120 a year in real cash back. You know, you let that build up. Next thing you know, $120. Bucks, delicious steak dinner with the wife, with the boyfriend. And for what? Just for going to Ibotta. That could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip, $120. Or you could use the cash back to buy that flight you wanted to get. A typical basket of groceries was over $50 more at the end of 2022 than at the beginning due to inflation. Mm -hmm. And we all know about that. You can earn two and a half times that in cash back from Ibotta or even more depending on how much you use Ibotta. I mean, really, Ibotta gives you real cash back, not points. Not points, real cash. Other apps give you points that don't amount to much. With Ibotta, you get real cash back that you can cash out to your bank account, PayPal, or gift cards. You can earn cash back on hundreds of online brands and retailers too when you start with Ibotta, including Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. Whether you want the cash or you want to go that route, it's there either way. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners five bucks, five dollars for just trying Ibotta by using the code THECAST when you register. Go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app and use the code THECAST. That's Ibotta, I-B-O-T-T-A, in the Google Play or the App Store, and then use the code THECAST and get your $5 off right out of the gate, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um... Yeah, I got to find that photo. Hold on. Let me just find yeah, the yeah. photo Take because this is something that uh, I think needs to be seen by all. Uh, when I first met Lana, photo. Um, by the so way, you under, you, you under the weather at all? No, why? No, I just, I just felt uh, that there was a little kind of hoarseness in your voice. Oh. oh, maybe. I don't know. Long weekend. But uh, not under the weather. <clears throat> so I got that coming. Now, I don't even know how to start this story. So I, I get invited to a party Saturday night. Um, David Zasloff, who runs him. Discovery Plus and HBO and, right, that's right. and uh, Warner okay. Brothers. He invites uh, me to Lon and I to his birthday party at Mister Chow's restaurant here in Los Angeles. So I walk in, and uh, it's a cocktail party, and uh, we kind of make our way in. I see a couple people I know, and then I start to see, you know, some some heavy hitters. Oh, oh now, God. I go to the the bar. By the way, I'm not drinking. I haven't drank in 15 days. Feel phenomenal. Nice. Beautiful. All right. All right. By the way, Patrick, did you get that photo yet? All right. Let, before we get into the story, I got. Let, let me show you the the photo. Kind of. And we have, look at this, bro. Just look. Can we zoom in on the face and the hair? Oh. This, bro. What is this? I mean, that's wow. that's a hell of a lot. That's a hell of a lot of hair. But there's nothing going on with it. There's it over oh. the ears, sideburns, <sighs> looking like. Uh, Elvis Presley, uh, 1966. No, Jesus bro, Christ! I, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm. You're right. There's a lot going on in this, but I'm blown away at the hair situation. I feel like you know Lana came for the hair and stayed for the personality, <laughs> because that looks. Look at that. Mine doesn't yeah. look like that either. That's why I don't like to see old photos of my hair. It's just a little upsetting. But uh, white watch is throwing me, and the. Uh, oh, I got a white I, watch on. I think so. Yeah, I think I saw a white watch. Which, oh ooh. yeah, yeah. Oh wow. Ooh yeah. That's again Sorry. pre Lana. I wore the white watch uh -huh. when I did the the, the interview with you on uh, alternate side. <clears throat> oh, that's right. Threw me off. You borrowed your mom's <laughs> watch in a rush. I, I gotta say though, overall, can we get a zoom out, Patrick? Uh, the jeans look not that. Yeah, it's just the fashion. I'm telling you, it's just the fashion. And yeah. we got to drop a few pounds. 
And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, the white watch, the baggy jeans, get all that off, and boom, bro. I could see it. I, could, I see what she could have seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, absolutely. God. All right. So, did you now when you though when you go out with someone like that, right? Because it was a bit of a you were set up, right? Someone said oh, you guys would make a good a friend, a well, mutual friend. Mutual friend, and then I met her at the gym, and we started talking. It wasn't like a date that we went out, and we just met each other on a date. I met her at the gym, oh. and it was a slow right. pro- progression from there. Do you remember feeling when you met her at the gym that, like, listen, I don't know if she's physically going to think um, in her league, that, you know? That was the thing. I thought. Like, I, like, I thought I was a catch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> like back then, when I looked in the mirror, I thought, "Why wouldn't anybody want this?" Right? right. Yeah. But now looking back at that, going, I know why I was single for so long. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there's also the aspect of you, you weren't famous yet. So what's what's the catch? You didn't have medical benefits. You know, you were living <laughs> on a dream. Living on a dream. You know, for all wives to go for it is like shit. All right, all right. I'll, you know, it's. I'm I don't sorry, know if you I do, would. You you do what for a living? <laughs> no, I'm at bananas this weekend. Oh, I'm uh, good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. All right, so let me take you back to Saturday night. We walk in, and I don't even know where this story is going to go. I don't know what the All hell right. we could use and what we can't use in here. Okay, right, okay. Let me just lay it down. We're just going to call it the passaway chest. Some of this shit's just going to go maybe archival, and then yes. either I have to pass away or the person I'm talking about has to pass away, and then we air it. Okay. Yeah, maybe something like 30 years from now, there'll be a special TV special with your two kids sitting down and- they're gonna play for the first time. They don't even know what they're gonna hear. And it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> we already got one chapter in the lock. Well, I think I got. Don't don't I have a Joe Pesci story too that we said? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah don't yeah. We, we so we got two of I two I know of and one I wish we had that I did. Jesus, this was must have been eight years ago. I told you about the guy coming backstage in the wheelchair. In the, in the wheelchair. Yeah. 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 Um, that one, Jesus, I wish we had that. Anyway, I go in at the bar and again, I, I, I've been around celebrities primarily for the last 24 years and I've seen probably most of them where I used to work at the Four Seasons. So I'm kind of used to seeing celebrities, but I'm seeing celebrities now in a different environment. I used to see him when I was waiting on him. Now yeah. they're like at the same party I'm at. Ah, Piers, yeah, man. Kevin Costner at the bar, right? <gasps> wow. Wow. I don't know what this guy's doing. And what is he about seventy? Can we look up uh, Costner? He's got to be in his seventies, right? Once you once you figure Costner seventy yeah, or he, more of a sixty six. I think, I think early 70s, man. <clears throat> you watch Yellowstone? Oh, man. It's the only show I watch that I'm caught up. Like, I don't even... Like, I watch it when it comes out every Sunday. I, uh, you know, I don't I do not do the uh, let a bunch of them build up. Yeah, so I'm totally caught up. And I have to say, before we go any further, literally two weeks ago, I'm watching Yellowstone. Um, and I look over at Jackie and I go... He he doesn't even look like you know. You say, "Oh, someone looks good for their age." I go, "He's like still handsome," and she's like, "Yeah, no, he is." It's like, wow. Yeah. Oh, he's sixty-seven. All right. Guy uh, looks kind. Guy looks better than I've ever seen him look. Right. Yeah, he's walking around. Well, okay. yeah, it's the guy. Listen, full dorm, tin cup. I mean, wow. Yeah, no, he, he looked good back then. I'm just saying, for this guy's, he's on, he's done, he's on the Tom Cruise bill. But is Patrick napping over there? Can I see a picture of Karen Costner? <laughs> <laughs> he's on the Tom Cruise pill. Oh my! God. Is that now that white shirt? Is that literally current? That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Sixty-seven yeah. years old. Yeah. 
and like yeah. could still go to any local bar, even if he wasn't famous, and just take someone home. Wow. Yep. So Man. he's there. I just I'm gonna rattle off the names who are there. Uh, Spielberg walks in. J.J. Uh, Abrams. Uh, Jason Bateman. Um, who else was there? <laughs> Bill Maher. By the way, I did the Bill Maher podcast. Oh, man, really? I, I, don't, I don't know where to go with this, bro. I'm all over the map here. Wow, man. You did Bill Maher. That's awesome. Did that get? Did you talk politics? No, it's not about politics. It was... Oh. It was... Uh, yeah, that's another... That was not, that's another right. story. Um, <laughs> whether you want to get more fit, be a better parent, or get more done at work, there's one thing that will help, and that's better sleep. With Miracle Made Sheets, you could tap into the power of self cooling temperature regulation, which has been shown to improve sleep quality by up to 34%. Using silver infused fabrics originally developed by NASA, Miracle Made Sheets are thermal regulating and designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long. So get better sleep every night. Miracle Sheets are luxuriously comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands. Go to try miracle.com slash the cast to try it today and we got a special deal for our listeners save over 40 percent and be sure to use the promo code the cast at checkout to save even more and you get three free towels and miracle is so confident in their product it's backed with a 30-day money back guarantee so if you aren't 100% satisfied, you get a full refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash the cast and use the code the cast to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash the cast to treat yourself to some phenomenal sleep. Thank you, Miracle Made, for sponsoring this episode. <laughs> Who else is there? Uh, uh. Bobby Flay, the property. Oh, shit. The twin property, brothers, too? Property brothers, the twin brothers. They're there. Yeah. So I'll give you an example kind of who's at this party. So I go up, and Todd Phillips is there, the director, hangover, joker who I know, introduces me to who I think is a friend of mine. And because he said, hey, you know, and I didn't hear the name. He doesn't even listen to the name because I'm like, oh, yeah, I know him. It's my friend Brett. Yeah. So I went in for the, the handshake, and as I'm shaking his hand, I'm looking, and I go, this ain't, this ain't Brett. This is Iron Man. Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> bald, bald. That's why photo it threw you me sent off. Me, man. Yeah, I sent you the photo bald. of you and him. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable, he, dude. Yeah, he's doing a movie. He's bald. So I'm like, oh, uh, you know, I trip over my words, and I kind of like, kind of like, get out of the not get out of the conversation, but like, t turn to my left and start talking to Todd a little bit. Okay, so now from the cocktail hour, we go. Oh. And this is what I'm thinking. And I don't know if you would be on the same wavelength here. I'm thinking cocktail hour. And then, because he rented out the whole restaurant. We have cocktails and then dinner. So my thought is, are there assigned seats? Right? Because yeah. I have a problem when there's not assigned seats. Because I feel like I'm always the guy that the host has to come up to and go, there's two There's two spots over there if you want. You know, like, I, I feel like... Huh. um. At the end of a kickball game, or, or sorry, at the at the when they're picking teams for kickball, <laughs> and then there's one guy left, right? And then they're gonna, yeah, you could we could come on this side. That's why I feel like when sometimes when I go to these parties, like yeah, yeah, your wife could sit over there, but then we have another seat over there for you. You know, like we're split up. <laughs> so 
<laughs> we had to we had to pull strings just to get you both through the door. So just wherever you see an empty seat, you know, right? <laughs> How many people are at this to give an idea like the the feasibility of assigned seats? Is it like two hundred people or something? Uh, or? I would say there's a good. Mm, I'm gonna estimate seventy five to one hundred people. Seventy five. Okay. Well, that's freaking intimate affair, man. Intimate affair. I, intimate I mean, affair. I, I can't. I can't not bump into Costa. There's only a hundred of us here. Okay. okay, so there's a main restaurant, and then there's one table kind of r- right outside the main restaurant, and this is who ends up without a seat. And I'm going to give you the people. Lana, me, Jason Bateman, Jason Bateman's wife, Robert Downey Jr., his wife, Judd Apatow. We don't have a seat. But there's a table outside the party, like just just outside the party. I mean, it's still part of the party, but it's on like right. a little po- pony wall. Yeah, well, so we're just the up- people you, the people you told me who didn't have a seat. I, 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 if we all collectively went outside, I'd be happy. I got Bateman. <laughs> I mean, we're yeah, fine. No, I'm, Ozarks, I'm happy we with- got a lot to discuss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would be, you know, at least you, you look around, you go, all right, Bateman's got no table, appetite. All right, all right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm with some le- legit here. I'm not, you know, with the bassist from uh, the fucking current foreigner band, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. So, oh, and Todd Phillips, no table. Oh, so, man. all right, I, I said, and they're like, hey, do you, um, Downey's like, you want you guys want to sit here? I'm like, yeah, no, oh, yeah, this, 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 this is this is good. So I sit down. I sit down. Me and Lana and Judd are at one end of the table, so we end up talking pretty much the entire night. Interesting guy, this guy. And, and I've met Judd in the past, but really had shed some light on raising kids and being in the business and just very, very enlightening. On what he was talking about, because you know what, you know what I've noticed, uh, being around some of these people that kind of been there, done that, I start like just throwing out like the problems I'm having, whether it be you know how much work do you do, how much time do you spend with the family, do you ever think you're gonna lose it all, you know, like just picking these people's brains, which is nice, nice to do because you, there's a little bit of vulnerability there when you start opening up and questioning. Maybe some of your insecurities when it comes to the business. By the way, I got to tell you, once again, there's no drinking for 15 days. I'm able to access words at a rate that I haven't seen since puberty. Really? I don't know if you noticed it. it, No, I haven't. I mean, it just sounds like regular vocabulary, but if you're blowing yourself away, (laughs) fantastic. Puberty is the biggest word you've used so far, in my opinion. (laughs) I'm not saying word choice. I'm just saying accessing words in general. I'm not saying what I'm saying. Is, yeah. is 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 profoundly like oh my god this guy's got an oh, abundant that... vo- vocabulary. I'm just saying it, being oh, yeah. able to find words and right. put them in a sentence is leaps Fat, and bounds. Yeah. For no, me th- right there now. is a Tom Cruise aspect to you. This whole show, <laughs> like you're zoned in, you're going, and that, like info's coming in. Before you go any further, I just want to point out not only uh, uh, the, the the stars that are so specific, they're specific to what I'm watching, like. I watch Yellowstone. I watch Property Brothers. I always watch Bobby Flay, the challenge show, where they challenge him, a guy to cook with him. Um, you know, so I'm I, at the cocktail party, I would have did a dip and dive. It would have been so beautiful. I already know, because I would have went up to Costa and said, I'm on the couch. My wife's like, why do they only film Yellowstone during the summer? And I'm like, because Costa's only going to Montana in the summer. <laughs> He would have laughed. We would have sipped. I'll see you later, Kev. Then I'd slide over to Bobby and be like, hey. So sometimes, I'm sorry, sometimes I see you make a faux pas when you're cooking in the challenge show. And I can't help thinking in your head, you're like, I, I can't beat these people every time. I got to burn something. You know? <laughs> and he'd be like, you saw that? I'm like, yeah, come on. You, be, you went a little too well done with that steak that time. I knew you were doing it for the chick. All right, sorry. So anyway, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like I think I just would have slid around. Then I would have went up to the Property Brothers and I would have been like, I had two best friends up growing up with twins. 
you guys reached a point where you said, "This is we got to separate ourselves." So did you flip a coin? <laughs> did you flip a coin to decide who had to go with the beard, or did you just want to go with the beard? <laughs> It's so funny you say that. I said, I don't want to do it. I don't want James. <laughs> and then I slide out. By the time I'm standing up, there's no seat for me. They'd all be like, sit with me over here. And Downey, did you even, by the way, did you even turn to Downey and do a, bro, what the fuck? I thought you were my friend Bruce. I'm so sorry. I didn't even recognize you. Or do you, or do you just like, I just how, how do you not share that with him? No, I, I just didn't come up, man. It, it was just, because I'll, I'll get to I'll get to even okay. that okay. conversation. Okay. Unbelievable to, bevy of stars here, bro. To, to go back to your twin, your twin yeah. uh, conversation. Yeah, yeah. Do yeah. you think twins actually have that conversation, and they look at each other and going, "All right, man, I'm sick of looking like you with the dress and this and that and the other thing. I'm gonna go a different route here." Or do you think one morning one twin comes out and they're supposed to wear the yellow outfit, and he comes out in the green outfit, and the one in the yellow goes, "Bro, what, what's going on?" Mm -hmm. Right, and, and he right. just goes, it's over. We ain't doing this anymore. <laughs> I've often thought, like, when the when the breaking point happens. Right. Well, you know, Lou, DJ Lou's a twin. Yeah. And, yeah, and he still lives with his twin brother. And you bring up a really good point. Has, it, has there been a documentary about this? Like, has one twin ever wanted to break up? And the other <laughs> twin was like, no, we're a team, and I rely on you. And... And like, here's the other question, bro. The guy in the in the Property Brothers, who's more like flannel beard, more like the that kind of guy. Yeah. Who who's to say? Like, for all we know, he'd rather shave and wear a suit and tie, and he's taken on a style that he doesn't even love, just to not have his brother's style. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. He, you think he loves his brother's style? But is going in the opposite direction, going, man, I would literally love to wear a suit, but I don't want to look like my brother, so let me put the flannel on. Exa that's a possibility, yeah. I mean, you literally sacrifice the true style you want to be just because you're someone else is doing that same thing, you know. Mm. And then, then there's the aspect of behavior, right? Because, you know, my buddy Larry, who you had at your house kindly, we had a great time that time for mm -hmm. pizzas. He, he's a twin. And his brother doesn't necessarily have the, the, the same... Uh, oh, oh, here, here's what it was. So they were working at one point in the same area of New York City. Now, when people would go up to my buddy Larry, thinking he was his twin brother, he would always nicely go, nah, it's my brother with twins. He works around here too. And they'd always go, oh. And they would go back to his brother and say, I ran into your twin. What a nice guy. I thought it was you. The other side, though, my buddy would say, whenever somebody... I uh, ran into my brother. He he wouldn't even respond to them. They'd go, Larry, what's up? And he would just keep walking. And then they would go, I do. I was yelling to you. What the fuck was that about? And he'd go, I got a twin brother. And he don't respond if you see him out there. Because they all have lunch and it's in the middle of the same area. So, so he would go to his brother go, dude, you're killing me, man. You're making me look bad because you, you're not being that. You know what I'm saying? So... It's almost like you got another you out there not behaving like you. <laughs> so, so do you think, as a twin, you have an obligation to respond to people if they think you're the other twin? Just on a right? courtesy? I think you do, right? Because sometimes what was happening, too, is people were saying to him, why didn't you respond? They, they, they literally left that scenario thinking it was my friend Larry, and he just purposely ignored uh, him. And it, so, so this, you know, it was a little both. Be, he might be losing friends left and right because of his brother. He says it's affecting business, man. I started meeting. I started meeting, and someone's like, "I ran into you and said hi." And it was my brother. He's fucking <laughs> not as nice. <laughs> So, well, here's a, yeah, there's a lot. Here's another that. one. A lot. What, when you're talking to somebody and you're a twin and they don't know you're a twin, do you have an obligation to tell those people, just so you know, I'm a twin, I got another I got another one of me right. running around out there? Or That's a good question. I think it's based on how close they live in the area. You know what I'm saying? Like, if they live within a five-mile radius, I think you have to tell me you have a twin. So if I'm in a fucking <laughs> deli and I think I see you and it's not you, 
That would be that would be mind blowing. Like, can you imagine if you never told me? And I'm in this freaking store, you know? So like, but if the guy lives in Texas and the brother lives in like, you know, California, you don't have to worry. Yeah. All right. All right. My, sister, my, my sister got twins. So ah. they don't have to, they don't deal with the whole dressing like one another. Okay, let's go back to the, to the party. So we're talking, talking. Lana gets up. Judd gets up, and then Todd Phillips and Downey come to my side of the table, and we start talking, right? Now, Robert Downey, I know his dad. His dad used to come to my shows at Gotham in New York because he knows the Mazzillis, and and oh, wow. we became friendly over the course of, I don't know, three or four years. He always used to come to my shows. Really nice guy. So I didn't know... The dad had mentioned to his son, Robert, about my comedy, and then this Robert was telling me that, oh, I really enjoy what you do, and da 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 Awesome, man. Awesome. So, and again, you don't know who's out there hearing you or who's a fan or whatnot, so then when right. you start hearing these things, you're like, oh, my God. It's flattering. Totally. It's insane. It's, it's uh, yeah. And we have a I'm- great conversation. Me, him, Phillips, my wife, up and this and talking and that. Before you know it, we're the last ones at the party. Oh wow! Now, I'm never the last one at a party. Very rarely do I shut down a restaurant. Right. But in this case, we kind of, it was like one of these things where you you lost track of time. A lot of times when I'm having a conversation with someone, I'm going okay. Uh, I'm in my head going, what am I going to say next? Or what's the next topic to keep this thing? This this conversation was just a, a flow of information, an exchange awesome. back and forth. And yeah. again, had some great insight on Hollywood and, and you know, his journey yeah. and what he's doing and whatnot. Wow, man. Wow. So, so like, do you ever, though, when you're in a conversation like that, have sometimes something in your head that you'd like to ask, but you're not sure? Like, you know, uh, just a random question, like, if you're doing, when you were doing Iron Man and you, like, and you want to talk about a scene, do you feel like, Jesus, he going to be like, this guy's asking me about a scene? and I'm like, like, or you just go with your instincts and just... Ask what you want and talk about what you want. Yeah, it, it wasn't. I didn't. I wasn't editing myself. If the if yeah. I had a question in my mind about something that he did, I would have no problem asking him. But it didn't go that way. It went. Okay. It went uh, more down the lines of like health and fitness, and we were talking more about wellness uh, rather than maybe like movies. Uh, but I w- did ask him about movies. I was getting advice on like how he memorizes lines and you know what's his process and this whole thing cuz I'm always kind of fascinated cuz I got a problem memorizing lines and whatnot. So we exchange numbers. Right? Yeah. Cuz he has this machine that I wanted to look into that helps with sciatic pain and whatnot. And uh, exchange numbers, and the next day, text him, hey, can you send over that information about the machine? Text him back and forth. I'm watching uh, football on uh, Sunday night. He FaceTimes me. <laughs> now, I know how you feel about FaceTime. Yeah. I feel like... In order to FaceTime you, and, and you've told me this in the past, that you have to be FaceTime ready. Like, you can't have your glasses on. You can't be in your pajamas. It's got to yeah. be a whole setup. I feel like after a certain point in the night, you become unfacetimable. Right? right. Reputations. Reputations are at stake. And there's certain looks I can't be seen with glasses, you know. And then, you know, no, I you have to text. And say I was gonna FaceTime in like five ten minutes. You around? And then I, and then I go, yeah, hit me up. Then I go, get my contacts in, fix my hair, put on a proper shirt in case. Okay. What uh, are you doing? Pressure's on, Downey Junior. Hitting you with the FaceTime. I feel like a guy like that FaceTimes you, 
regardless of where you're at in the house, how the hell you look, whatnot, I think you got to pick it up. What about this? What if he's sitting there with his wife, a girlfriend, I don't know his personal situation, and he's going, no, I really think he'd be great for the, for the new boss, for the Marvel, blah, 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 the one that I report to. And she's like, he is funny, and there are some lines in there. I think, you know what, let's do it. You're right, I'm going to ask him. Boom, hit you with a FaceTime. You didn't spritz. You just come on. He's like, wow, looking at you like, whoa, this is not the look I thought I was getting. And he decides to go, hey, just wanted to say what's up. It's good to hang with you the other day. And then he hangs up and he looks at his wife. Holy shit. What the fuck? You look terrible. Yeah. I don't know if we could get him in the look. We, you know? I don't know. I mean, that's a... <laughs> Although I got to say, to interrupt myself, I saw your Instagram videos. I, I think you did two at least. Were you early in the morning? It was so oh, yeah. fucking funny and you were calling yourself fat. But even beat up at that ungodly morning hour, you had a cool... Yeah, listen, you weren't, you wouldn't be that bad to roll over and have to face. I got to be honest with you, guy, because that was clearly your wake up face, oh, you God. know. No, it was, so it was... I'm, I'm just saying, I think, um, I think you're safe to kind of answer at any given moment, and you show people pretty much how you look anyway at any given moment. I'm an open book, bro. I'm an open book. There you go. There you go. So I pick up the FaceTime. How many, chat rings? And... How many rings? It did took you, me a while to come? process that he was even calling. I was like, wow, yeah. this is this is quick. Right. Like, who's to say time? he's not going to go, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I meant to hit. I was trying to get Jason from the other night. But the... <laughs> <laughs> what if it was a mistake? I didn't even know it. What if yeah. he, he got me and he goes, holy shit, that's the wrong oh. guy. And then he just <laughs> talked to me for 10 minutes. <laughs> just <laughs> oh shit! Oh, that God. would be all that would be going through my head. I let it ring three times just so he has enough time to look at it, and make sure he's calling the right guy. You know, <laughs> you're giving him time yeah. to decide whether or not this is the right call. Yeah, because sometimes you hit, you know, call, and you know it's gonna ring at least twice. Then he looks up, he sees Sebastian. Oh shit! You know, he's got a second to get off of that. Well, yeah, here's a good point. When you face, and I've done this, when you call or FaceTime somebody and you realize it's the wrong person, or let's say it's a mistake, let's say you take your phone out and all of a sudden it's calling somebody for some reason, right. and you right. quickly hit end, and maybe on the other other side it rang once or twice, and this is what I want to know. And, and uh, Like when you start calling someone, right, mm -hmm. and when you hear... Da, 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 on your end, is that the first? Is that the first ring they're hearing? Like, yeah, I don't know if it's simultaneous, but I feel like that's letting you know they're getting one ring in a second. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So is it going on at the same time? Like when I hear the ring, they're hearing the ring, or do they hear a ring first, then I hear it on my end, or vice versa? I want to know vice versa because. When I lose my phone and I call Jackie's phone to find my phone, hers will go, Duh! and then my phone will ring. Okay, so we're hearing it. Okay. But do you have an obligation as the caller, if you do a mistake call, to then text the other person and say, sorry, butt dial, or sorry to mean to call you? you, you right. Do, I hate or, that term, butt dial. Or what, whatever, accidental. No, I know everyone uses it, but everyone yeah. uses it. Yeah. Yeah. So do you do you send a quick message or you just let it go? Because what's happening on my end is I don't even send anything. I just I'm hoping the other person on the other side goes, Oh, that was a mistake. I got people yeah. if I call them and it and it rings once, they'll call me back. You, you ever get this? Like oh, yeah, I didn't yeah. I want to talk to you. That's why yeah. it was a one and done. Needy, so needy. Right? Well, were you calling me? Were you calling me? <laughs> Listen, even even when someone calls me and it's like, I know it's not a mistake, if they don't leave a message, I don't call them back. Because if, it, if it's not important enough for you to leave a message, then you don't need to call back, right? Yeah, so, I agree. I, I agree. I'm with you. Oh, God. I, I, don't, I never do that text you and go that was an accident 
It's unbelievable, yeah. though. People do do that, bro, all the time. You know? I, f- I feel I do have to do that to certain people because I know they're going to call me back. That's true. That's true. So it depends on the person. Yeah. Yeah. So now, do you so tell on- Lana... Do you tell Lana, is she around that Downey's calling? Like, do you, or do you I'm just talking go? Serafina, and I, uh-huh. I had just talked to Caruso, and I came out to the living room, and I was on the phone with him. I was actually hoping that Lana came in while yeah. the conversation was happening. Right. But she didn't. But by the way, you did a movie with Robert De Niro, so like... <laughs> Well, what, you know, like this, you already been, this is already your world, you know, but still it's so funny, man. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, it is, but I'm not like, it's, it's strange. It is the world, but it isn't, but isn't, it's not the world. It's weird. I got two, one foot in one, one the other, you know, like. Absolutely. And I mean, like, you know, for 50 years, almost 50 years of your life, it wasn't your world. You watch yeah. these people all the time. You yeah. grew up so on these people. It's new. It's yeah. it's 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 fairly new. Yeah. Uh, bro. I'm, I'm going to the house Saturday with the family. With the kids, the whole thing. We're going over there. He's right. got he's got animals. He goes, I got animals on the property. The kids could take a look at the animals. I got a llama, and pigs, and one. And we'll have an early dinner. Oh my god! So, oh, that's great, bro. This so, is this is. <laughs> go ahead. This is just one more person now that should be at this birthday party for you and Lana that we're gonna have at the pool that you have to have because me and Jackie are counting on for our bucket list to meet a lot of these people. We're not having the party. <laughs> Seriously, man? Yeah. Party's hey. off. And I'll tell you why. It's the next story. All right. Bro, we mean like a, we might need like a four episode four, four episode bro, day, the way this shit's oh, going. Yeah. This is this is really fascinating, man. <laughs> it's got it's got you know. I love when movie stars have what you'd expect them to have. Like Downey Jr. says, I got a llama. I'm like, I'd expect you to have a llama. That's fantastic. <laughs> and if I go to Tom Cruise's and there ain't giraffes, I'm going to be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Wow, man. So is there, you You sent this cool photo of you and uh, him, and I wouldn't guess in a million years that was Downey Jr. Can I bring this up? Yeah. Because his hair was shaved, and he's got great hair. So is that a is that a movie or something he's doing? Yeah, he's doing a movie, and I think that's why he's bald. I mean, I, okay. I would assume. Yeah. So he was he was telling me he was doing this movie, and he's playing uh, this character. So I, I think maybe that's why. But um, so funny Michael, when a movie star shaves their hair. All the other movie stars are like, "What the fuck did he get?" <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> What's he playing that he don't need hair for that I didn't even know there were auditions for? <laughs> uh, then you go into another, like a diner, and there's another huge star in their head shape. It's an ensemble piece. Why am I seeing Ryan Gosling and DiCaprio with shaved heads? What the fuck are they doing? <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh, that is the biggest movie star. Holy shit, these guys. You're hanging with these are big dogs. So- Cool. Okay, here's the question. Yeah. What do you bring? Like, as the offering. I mean, uh... Is, uh is you bring a, something for the llama just to throw them off? <laughs> right? <laughs> <That's> just, llama <laughs> food. <laughs> like, like a little bag of seeds? I don't know what the hell to bring over there. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. Do like, you, you go you don't, with, like... You, he don't drink. He, he he's a vegetarian. Yeah. By the way, I'm picking all this up at the table. Like they brought out a little special vegetarian dish for him. Right. And I clocked that. I go, okay, vegetarian can't bring him a charcuterie plate. There's meat right. on that, you know. Right. Right. Yeah. No, it's very limited. But you can bring him like some organic honey. I mean, <laughs> I don't. I don't even know what these people. 
<laughs> you know what I think that should start to be a trend with, with celebrities because I know I see a lot of these athletes, like I'm sure like when Watt retired, I, I, oh, I know for a fact someone wanted one of his guys on his team wanted a jersey signed. You want stuff, right? I always thought if I was like a, a star, it would be really cool if stars, when they came to my house, they brought me something personal, you know? Like if DiCaprio came over and he's like, remember the scene in uh, uh, Hollywood? What was that movie? Once upon a time in Hollywood, where I was by on the car with the T-shirt, yeah. Here's the T-shirt. This is the T-shirt you're wearing in the scene, right? And then you build up a collection, a room collection. Like McConaughey was over here one time, and he brought the uh, you know cigarette holder he had in milk. I don't know, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> so I actually took the lighter from the set that uh, I was using in The Irishman at the right. at the scene where I'm in the courtroom. There was a lighter there. I mm-hmm. housed it. You know, I took it. And the, back, the pack of cigarettes, I took it. Just as like a little memento, right? So cool. But, nice. But that that's just like in my little private stash. I feel like when you go over to these people's houses, whoever it could be, it could be, it could be a Downey Jr., it could be a very successful CEO of a company or whatever, where they, they kind of like have a lot of stuff. And this is what I'm thinking of putting in at my, I'm, I'm building a garden over here. I, I want to start living off the land, right? <laughs> Cucumber, tomatoes, just, I'm, I'm oh, going to, wow. I'm going to have, guys, I'm going to have a, guys, <laughs> what? lemons, what, what, what do you mean, guy, what, what? Hey, you, you guys get two weeks of rain out there, all of a sudden you guys think you can start farming? <laughs> I mean, let's not forget, two months from now, you're going to try to turn on a sprinkler to water your lettuce, and, and the governor's going to come on and be like, no, guy. <laughs> no, we're done with that. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. In two months, I'm going to have a garden. The that's guy cool. that's put, the guy's putting the garden together goes, you know, we could have like a, like, like a, like a bee's nest, like a what do they call it? Beehive, like a beehive, like a managed beehive where you could make they could make your own honey. You get your That's own honey. What I was saying, bro, that's huge. People love that Hollywood people. Bees yeah, are good Hollywood. for the environment. Organic. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, man, it's like. So if I came to your house. And you're like, hey, come on, uh, go over to the house, right? We're going to have some, uh, whatever, a little dinner and wine tonight. And I brought you a little little bear, like a little bear jar mm-hmm. of, of my own honey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's, the, what's the take on that? Do you, if you're making your own honey and you bring it yeah. over to somebody's house as an offering... Do you say it's from my <laughs> from oh, my you, private collection? Absolutely. I mean, otherwise, you know, he's bringing over honey. Why don't you just bring over a jar of peanut butter? I mean, <laughs> it's got to be. But I listen, I'd prefer a charcuterie plate from you if you come into my house because I know you make a dynamite one. But for Downey Jr., if you, if, your honey's not going to be ready by then, but he would. No. that would be a nice thing to bring. That would. Yeah, but you know what? what? Going down, going down a lot of these homemade products. If I got honey from you from your private honey nest, I go, oh, wow! I, I couldn't wait to have, like, or I would make it a point to have something that night where I had to put your honey on. Like I couldn't wait right. to go. Oh, right. I'll have that when I need it. I'd make yeah. tea, and I don't even drink tea. I'd make tea right. that night and put Just, a dollar, put a honey in there. Just because you brought it over. Right. But with homemade product, right? Mm-hmm. If someone brings me homemade wine, yeah. That goes in the garbage. That's a well, different up that's a different up to now. Up to now. You're gonna you're starting to roll with people with vineyards though. <laughs> you know what I mean? I like <laughs> Junior gave you a bottle of wine. I'm sure you're gonna let it breathe and dry a glass. <laughs> if you got your own professional vineyard and it's like an uh, it's like a proper vineyard, I I don't want to drink anything 
with your feet on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so, yeah. Some of this wine's made in the basement, and the whole family goes down there and stomps on the grapes. I yeah. Ain't, I ain't doing it. <laughs> no. I ain't going to see sipping wine and looking at you going, your, fo- your feet now is in my mouth. <laughs> right. Uh-uh. <laughs> I ain't doing it. Right. I'm sorry. Well, a lot of homemade wine is grape juice with sugar added, and it ferments. It's not even like real grapes. So, you know, um, uh, I'm not into. Know, it. I, I'm not people you, that you, brag you, about you, making their own wine. I, this, I, yeah. I, I, I know people like this. I make my own wine. Good, you drink it. Don't bring that <laughs> right. shit to my house. <laughs> But you'll try that honey. But you'll try that honey. <laughs> honey? All day, all day long. Now, now, what about if your garden was done and you had some nice tomatoes, some beautiful lettuce, I mean, some really beautiful produce, you think it's weird to, like, if you were going to Downey's for a summer picnic or something, just to throw a bunch of produce in a basket and, and with a sort of, like, and keep the basket, too, and just be like, hey, this is some stuff I had, don't you? Well, that's why I'm having a. Uh, that's why I'm doing a garden. The garden is for the, mainly the kids, so they kind of see where food comes from and going to pick the food and and right. you know, so to kind of give them an education and and a, a wherewithal of what food's all about. Plus, we you know we 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 you know buy a lot of vegetables. It gets expensive, so we figure eh, we'll grow it ourselves. Yeah. Plus. There's a lot of surplus on a garden. And it's not like I'm going to be eating 90 tomatoes. I think what I'm going to start doing now, just to your point, is if I'm invited anywhere, a party or an evening or whatnot, I come with a beautiful basket of produce right. from the garden with rosemary. I'm going to grow rosemary in there, lemons, tomatoes. Little, People, little, that's beautiful. Beautiful. I think that's we a, had a we had a neighbor. We lived on a dead end street. Uh, the Guglielmones, right? Great neighbors of ours. Tito Guglielmone, the father. Jesus. Great, great guy. Guglielmone. Right? So, yeah. So <laughs> Tito, Tito grew his own garden, and he would come down the block in the summertime all the time. He loved his beer, so he'd have a beer and a cigarette and in a bag. He'd have some lettuce for you and a few tomatoes. And my my dad, they called him Freddie. Like, Freddie, I got some leftover, so I got so much stuff. It's growing so much with the last rain, you know, and he'd always bring over produce. And it was like a beautiful thing. You'd love it when he came over because you were getting fresh produce. So I think you taking it to a whole new level with a, with a basket and with rosemary in it and stuff. Home run. Home Housewarming home gift. Run. Yeah. So I think that's Absolutely. what's going to happen on, on Saturday. Um, now, uh... So we got to go on a Downies to hang out. God. Did you talk to Costa? No. I had really nothing to open up with him about. You know, I couldn't really get into this fucking guy with this this uh, this leaf blow. This guy had the leaf blower oh. outside. You would think he was on the fucking roof with this damn thing. <laughs> right? I don't know. These right. leaf blowers, why they go, hey, hey. <laughs> Why? Why is right. it on and off? Can't you, it's just on? No, because like, sometimes you, you just need a light, little light hit to make it to get it off away from the bush. And then when you got a bigger pile, you want to push it. You give it full power, bro. I, I know where this guy's coming from. Is it unheard of though to go like at a party like this and just go up to Casa and make? I I don't want to interrupt you, so Sebastian Mascalco, and just want to say you. Thank you so much for so many great films and loving Yellowstone. And or is it like, you know, heard it a million times and you just interrupted me? Go away. Me and my sister had this conversation the other night. Did I tell you I was on a plane with Scotty Pippen? Did I tell you this? No, man. Okay. Uh, about a month ago, I'm on a plane coming back from New York. I sit down. I go to put my bag up in the thing, and across. I'm on the aisle, and across from me at the window is Scottie Pippen. Now, Scottie Pippen is someone I grew up on, many memories shared, six championships, Chicago Bulls, yeah. the whole the whole deal. Love Scottie Pippen. Now, I text Lana. I said, Scottie Pippen sitting next to me. You know, should I say something? Yeah, say something. I text a buddy of mine from Chicago. Scotty's 
Pippen next to me. Should should I say something? Yeah, you got to say something to Scottie Pippen. Now, who's it for? Like, when <laughs> when you go up to these people, yes. is it is it for you to say, like, or is it when you say something, you're supposed to make them feel good? What is it? Like, why do you want to say something to somebody that might have you've, you've watched or had some influence on mm-hmm. you? Who's it for? You? What's this right. guy blowing out there? <laughs> I don't hear How many fucking leaves do I got? Uh, oh, I don't hear him. I don't hear him, but it's bothering you. But No, are we, are we get, is this going to be on the... Uh... Okay. Now... All right. You, when you want to say something to Scottie Pippen, and like we've all been there a million times, you're pretending it's for them, but you know it's for you. It's for you to say, yeah, yeah, I spoke to, I spoke to Scottie Pippen. You yeah. know? Yeah. To so be able that, to say you, yeah, it's for you. That, you. But you, yeah, but we so, like to pretend it's all. He'll, he'll like to hear how great he is and how much he meant to my childhood because you know he probably hasn't heard that that much so. That's what I'm that, saying. That, like, that, yeah. The guy's going to, you know, hey, yeah, the Bulls. And, and then he's going to go, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. And then he's going to sit down and go, Jesus, again with the Bulls. I, I don't know if that's uh, that's his take or does he does he feel good about being recognized? You know, he's out of the game now for whatever, right. 10 to 15 years. And, you know, he's, you know, he's, he's maybe not. The, the glory years are behind him as far as like yeah. uh, his career and whatnot. And when right. he hears that, does it feel like, oh, I'm still like, people still know who I am. I'm still relevant. Da, 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 da. Right. I don't know. I just it's left it at that. I didn't say shit because I didn't want to bother the guy. Right. He's there on an airplane, right? He's like, right. what am I going to do? Right. Hey, nice to like me. Then everybody else is going to hear that. Then right. then I feel like someone goes like, oh, he's. He's talking to Scottie Pippen. I could talk. To, and then, then the next person's gonna go and go talk to Scottie Pippen because they heard I was talking to him, and it feels right. like now the whole plane. <laughs> right. He's I gonna have know. a line. But doesn't it feel weird to like just get your bag and you're waiting for the door to open and th- your childhood heroes <laughs> right in front of you? <laughs> just gonna sit here. I I'd say more to him if he wasn't famous. Like if if he wasn't famous, I'd have already said ah fucking shit weather out there, huh? Right. <laughs> Like, like I'm saying, I'm saying less because it's the weirdest thing, man. You know, and you gotta think he's sitting there going six fucking championships, not one good morning, not one good morning. Holy shit, fair weather. You know, he's just like taking the window seat, looking out there with a chin. Everybody still says hi to Michael. Holy shit. <laughs> Well, here, here's something that happened. Speaking about an airport, this was uh, last week. I'm coming back from Vegas. I'm waiting for my bag and got earphones on. Guy comes up to me, and I'm like, yeah, he goes, you're from Chicago, right? I said, yeah. He's like, nice to meet you. And I'm looking at him. I go, I know this guy. Willie Galt. Remember him? Wasn't he a wide receiver for the for the Bears? Yeah, eighty five. Holy shit! I go. He goes Willie Gall. I go. Huh. And this one I couldn't hide. This one was like. Right. I go. Oh my god. Willie Gall. I go, bro. I grew up on you. The eighty five Bears. Speedy Willie. The whole thing. He's like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. We start talking. He was in Vegas, and he was at the electronics show, and he's into electronics. He's got a business and whatnot, and, and he's like, do you, want, do you mind if I take a picture? Do you mind if I take a picture? I go, I got to take one of you. My dad's going to shit. I mean, we grew uh, up watching the yeah. 85 Bears. So that was kind of like a mutual exchange, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, Which was nice, and, and it, you know, he came up to me, which is nice because I was a fan of of of, of him growing up. But like, if I went up to Scotty Pippen and said, "Hey, man, I'm I'm a big fan," and right. and maybe he doesn't know that no. I do comedy, maybe right. he maybe he knows. Maybe he was sitting over there going, "This motherfucker's from Chicago, right? And he ain't he ain't nothing." Yeah. I know. I mean, maybe could've, it, it, it could have. <laughs> 
Now, here's, here's another question. Who's to say you and Willie Galt don't have that wonderful moment, and then Willie Galt walks away, you walk away. As soon as Willie Galt walks away, now a non-famous dude, same age as you, goes, fucking Willie Galt! Oh, my God, I grew up. Now, do you think he's still as pleasant with that guy as he just was with you, or do you think he's like, oh, God, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, you know. <laughs> oh, shit. It's a, oh, my God. I'll take it. I mean, I don't get it, so I'll take it any time. But, I mean, after a while, I, 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 I still have nightmares because when I ate with Billy Joel and Kevin James and them, like I said, I didn't say much. I was more right there, but didn't say too much. But then when we left and I went up to Billy and he was wearing a med hat and I'm like, and he's waiting for his fucking car. He's about to get in. And I'm like, Billy, though you were a Yankee fan. I, I, bro, I have nightmares. I can still remember his eyes like, oh, fuck. I'm so <laughs> for the car. And he goes, nah, I like them both. You know, he's doing that thing like, he's not even looking. Nah, I like them both. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, yeah, I like them both. Oh, Get the fuck out of here, guy. That's what he's, you know, I know that's what he was thinking. <laughs> God I, damn I'm playing the Paramount next week It's sold out And my guys who book me They book Billy Joel So I did it last time too I was like hey, Send them an email Tell them to call me <laughs> Don't tell them <laughs> So I would flip Try to get Billy by, off by his way, ass To played, come see my stand up Have you played there? <laughs> yeah, yeah last year I sold it out too Very exciting I'm glad they came back And you, and you got the brick? <laughs> got the brick Nice yeah, nice. they're good building people up over my there. bricks. Building up my bricks. He's like, Sebastian has 15 of these. We did, 15. and now we're gonna build it up with you in my head. I'm like, hey, you think I'm gonna sell this place out 15 times? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, like I like that club. That's a good club. Oh, it's Paramount, club. But by the Guys, way. It's don't Paramount. rain on my parade. It's the fucking nicest venue I play. It's no club. It's a beautiful theater. <laughs> no, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know. I mean, you play arenas now. Yeah, no, I like that club. <laughs> No, it's like a. It's, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, it's a nice know. venue. It's a nice venue because I wouldn't call it a theater because it's like it's not set up as 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 a theater. It's almost very Play unique. Play small. The, yeah, it's it, cool. Yeah, it's it, yeah, it's a very intimate room. I just like wow, bro. I mean, thank you for sharing that story with us because I know. As you grow with the and you do more and more stuff, you know you, you, you're not going to tell us every time you hang out with somebody. But um, what an amazing! I, we didn't even touch on Bateman. I did radio once on Sirius XM, and he came on, uh, and within like five minutes, I'm like, "This guy is so cool! Like, he's just oh, a cool, nice guy." Man. It, it, th that guy's an, that's that's another story. That guy's yeah. a whole other element. Yeah, he's he's, he's cool, hysterical. Dude. Yeah, yeah, he was funny, even funny. Yeah. yeah, his father-in-law is Paul Anka. Yeah, Paul Anka, who used to live uh, eight houses down from me. Not in Chicago, <laughs> where you are now, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my dad used to do his hair. <laughs> All right, great hanging, bro. All right, great hanging, man. We'll see you next uh, week. Uh,